unfortunately, that's where Rubik's Spirit Breaker, they don't really give any save. Rubik is not going to be shoving these heroes off of you. He's not the most defensive. He can really throw one telekinesis, and that's his contribution there. So I think just having a, an element of a healer in a lot of these drafts is a theme that we're probably going to grow and see coming into 731. But now, if you're Dog Champ, well, you see the Undying. What is Luki Luki going to want to play versus it? I hazard to say now the Hoodwink even seems a little bit better just because you know it's going to be a strength melee 5 running at you, so maybe you don't want to be put on one of those strength offlaners, but at the same time, I think that's a little bit of a gamble here considering how it played out in the uh, previous series, not to mention uh, pretty fragile versus the Spirit Breaker and really the only thing you could do versus this previous iteration of Spirit Breaker was just get as many heroes that naturally buy Yule Scepters and hope that he's not going on you first. Dog Champ, really uh, dipping into that reserve time to think this one over. This is kind of early in the drafts to be running into this predicament. And we did have an instance yesterday where a team kind of ran it down a little bit too much and ended up with a Skyrath that they may not have wanted. Although, uh, in fairness, they very nearly won with that random Skyrath. But... You would rather not have that mm. situation here and the shadow demon i think that's the first time et that we're, we have actually seen the hero picked it's been banned out pretty consistently but selection here for dog champ yeah and banned out typically because of the threat of the death prophet just being the dissuasion or picking up the death prophet and then wanting to cover your bases here and well that's your counter versus the sb that's your consistent purge that's something that now if you are going to go into these team fights. You have to kind of find him first. Not to mention, uh, with the way that Soulcatcher functions, if you Soulcatcher Storm Zips, you aren't very careful. Well, hey, that Undying Heal might not matter. Now, pairing it up with the Legion Commander, I like the Legion. That's one of Luki Luki's heroes. But with Shadow Demon Bane, damage is slow. Damage is stacked up. It's something that is really not burst oriented. So not having that partner like a Skyrath mage is maybe a little bit of a risk here but we'll have to see what Luki Luki can do in his lane because I don't know th this combo feels a little bit like they're wanting to do different things where the shadow demon is playing slower he disrupts you know he binds his time with the soul catcher and LC just jumps and wants you to throw everything at the target he duels with him so it's a little bit of a disconnect there but again we'll have to see but a little bit of save picked up in the LC as well and Queen of Pain just solid from King of Kings. I suppose looking at Dog Champ in terms of what they might want to do, you do have that potential to sort of chain heroes in, sort of get them into the fight staggered, right? With a disruption or a nightmare or a fiend's grip. Uh, heroes like the LC and the Storm can now maybe get involved from much further away. But how often is that really going to come into play? Because your supports then have to play pretty... <clears throat> aggressively pretty far forward right to be able to catch heroes out of position with enough time for the course to then come in so in theory i think i can understand what the idea there is but as you said it feels like the cores and the supports are kind of going in opposite directions strategy wise yeah and when it comes to the supports they're either like you said needing to play completely proactively so that way they actually know what they're getting into or they're completely reactive with the nightmare saves with the disruptions defensively but as soon as you use a disruption def defensively well there's half of your damage just taken out of the fight already and i think that's where maybe in stonebank's hero here we could see Possibly the Luna come out, just run SD Luna, try to have a reason for having this SD a little bit more, just have the illusions to play with. But at the same time, you have a beam to throw out, but I think you want another initiator with how SD Bane look as a support duo. You want as many playmakers as you can get, and it's going to be Stonebank PL yet again. Hasn't worked yet, but we'll have to see. Unfortunately, don't think the illusions you're going to be making of them with the shadow demon are going to be nearly as powerful as some other choices you could have gone for but hey that's their gamble they're going to look for stone big pl and okay. that's a pretty nice tiny pick it's not the sven they think they could have maybe counterpicked super hard there but uh the tiny as we've already seen as the core position is still pretty brutal to play versus yeah i mean that damage that he can put out is something that dog champ are still going to be hard pressed to counter and with the tiny being picked up as well that's maybe one less target that your lc is going to be able to want to duel up so maybe lukey lukey has to look elsewhere because the tiny in a position one role is not just going to do damage he is going to be 
relatively durable, so we shall see, and you mentioned earlier on, the Stonebank PL has not really been working out fantastically for them. On top of that, it doesn't really synergize particularly well with any of the other picks in this lineup. I mean, I know it's a comfort pick for Stonebank, but you don't really have fantastic scenarios where you think with this lineup, yes, a PL definitely puts them over the top. Yeah, and I guess in contention with the Luna pick that I was proposing, PL will be a little bit more adept when it comes to, let's say, pushing onto the Tombstone. He has the Phantom Rush, uh, as well as being able to, I don't know, hide when it comes to dodging out the uh, Spirit Breaker charge. But at the same time, I almost wish the Dog Champ had gone for a hero like the PA and the Slardar for Luki Luki and Stonebank. Just have uh, not a simple combo, but just a little bit more counterplay, because right now it does feel like all of the cores on Dog Champ are more or less on an island, and it's something that they do play for. They draft in that very NA style where they play for their lanes, and then team fighting and cohesion kind of falls by the wayside. It's something that SA has always been better about, but I'm just very concerned with their odds here, just kind of right off the bat. I think Ray's going to need to do an incredible job. Yeah, that storm becomes now so incredibly important, especially considering Stonebank is going to need the time to build himself up. So. We'll see if they can play that pace. The problem is that their opponents have sort of drafted in a manner where they're also going to be looking for sort of a similar fast-paced style. You've got a Spirit Breaker and a Queen of Pain on that side. So we'll see sort of who plays that same style best, whether Stonebank is going to be able to be that big bad later on in the game. Yeah, it's a big question that we're kind of asking here at the very least i think the tiny might struggle once we do have that diffusal kind of picked up here when it comes to the endless high ground siege diffusal just puts a hero like him on a little bit of a timer here you can't really afford to stick around when you don't have the ability to throw out necessarily all your spells and that's something where in the queen of pain at the very least king of kings aren't all out and out in control but that's also where I'm just concerned about what this SP is able to do in a current patch. And again, it tuned down a little bit, damage rescaled, but at the same time, you know, he's still SP. Really, this was much less of a nerf patch and more of a tweak patch. Yeah, not uh, not shutting down the Spirit Breaker entirely, just making him not sort of first or second tier, right, as he was sort of becoming uh, on the back end of the previous patch. So. We'll see if Dunhow can make something happen here as we were paused for Benny. He was DC'd for a moment, but he is back in. And Benny, this is something that he does, I think, more than almost any other carry in South America. My man does not care. Uh, he says, okay, I'm going top. I'm going to stand next to my tower. We're not fighting. I don't care about runes. I am going to the tower. That is my play. So... It means King of Kings don't really get to make too many moves elsewhere on the map without one of their damage dealers, but... If they can secure the bounty runes instead and avoid aggression from the dog champ side, then it really doesn't matter too much. And then Benny gets to avoid any shenanigans in the early stages of his own lane. Yeah, and B9, he's running around, already cast a brain sap, but not really going to matter all too much. The most contested bounty rune it seems so far in the patch is just this radiant bottom one, but it's also pretty easy to get bullied off. Lukey Lukey looks like he's gonna try for the snipe, but as soon as he hit gets hit with the decay, there's gonna split 50-50, so no early assault. Listen, I was saying Benny just sort of goes to the tower and sits there. He he did come over just to make sure, but not gonna get overly involved. Never wants to stray too far from his lane, so. TP gets back up there quickly, and we've got another pause. Go. This time it's Hane, who unfortunately is DCing, so King of Kings with a couple of players uh, having some slight connection issues at the start, but hopefully uh, Hane can get back in just as quickly as his teammate did, and we can get this one underway, but another, another pause as we try to set up the laning stage here. Yeah, and that is one thing to note. Usually it matters way less with the South American teams, but we are in US East here, you know? They are playing on a little bit of ping, just a, just a bit. But that's uh, also where, I guess, that's one thing that Dogchimp have just out of the gates, not even having to work for it. They get to play, uh, well, everyone but Stonebank. Everybody else gets to have fun, but 
that man's still on a little bit of ping. That's a connection there, but oh, Honic, he's back in. King of Kings ready to go. Dog Champ say we are good as well. So, well, two pauses right at the start of the game, but it looks like we are going to get things underway, and we'll see which of these two teams can really get out to the early advantage. Luki on this Legion Commander might have to be maybe a little bit careful, right? Always, as a strength hero in an undying lane, you do need to play with a little bit more caution than usual, but Yaren, I feel like nine times out of ten, should be able to do exactly this. He's going to keep Serem occupied, actually hitting him with quite a few stacks of the poison here, so your undying may want to be careful, but I feel like if you're Serem, just uh, maybe a stick away from being okay, he doesn't have it yet, but should be able to pick one up fairly quick. Yeah, and at the same time, if Yarin uh, commits too early, and oh, they're gonna try and trade each other out here. Okay. I think that Rem wins this though, but oh, it's Ooh. close, but Yarin's got it. Nice. Shadow Demon wins the fight, first blood going, and that is something that you rarely see nowadays, ET. The two supports, or two heroes in general, really, regardless of position, this early in the game, saying, you know what? We are fighting until one of us dies. And they just both commit to that, but. Yarn who comes away with it and Serem. Uh, I mean, you have to try, right? He he was pretty close to it, but just loses out because of the poison. Yeah, and one more decay, and hey, he might actually be able to win that, or even if he had an Orb of Venom, perhaps. But having the boots, just having the ability to dodge is a little bit of a cost there, cost of war, but really big win for Yarn. Not to mention a soul kill. Luguli wasn't in range for that, so he's been getting all the XP, not slowing down his offlaner at all, and honestly, a pretty nice win. Serem does uh, find the time to walk all the way towards that water rune, but usually with the supports, you have so many jobs you need to do in these first two minutes of the game. Uh, blocking, unblocking the camps, making sure there are no pull shenanigans going on, that there isn't time for that to kind of brawl, but they get just caught on that large camp spawn, and I think that's why that fight ends up even brewing in the first place. In the meantime, Benny, eh, it's unfortunate. Have his lane partner go down, they give up first blood, but the Tiny is not really going to care too much. This is the position one Tiny... Uh, I don't even really want to say drawback, it's just the nature of the hero. You're not really looking for that Avatos combo as middle lane. Ray, able to win the 1v1 against Mini. He gets the point in the Electric Vortex is 4, and Queen of Pain, oh, actually doesn't have a point in the blink, so wouldn't have been able to get away no matter what. Yeah, he's going for, I want to say, the lane winning build on Queen of Pain, which is what you typically go versus the Storm Spirit, just because you're entire job is to make it nearly impossible for the storm to approach the wave but that's where also ray with two points in the static remnant this build it does an incredible amount of damage but it the problem is if you don't hit the remnant well that second point in overload is just that much better but if you hit the remnant well hey you get a solo kill and that's exactly what ray needs and of course having it happen on his storm spirit it's uh just perfect for him all up top, they're playing pretty deep here on the King of Kings side. They threw the tombstone down in the tree line, but it's gonna get cleaned up. And well, that's a that's a pretty deep dive this early on. But again, Benny on this tiny, there really isn't much damage to work with. He's just all in on the farming. So if you're dog champ, you just kind of hold your ground. And realistically speaking, they didn't even take much damage from that, which kind of makes it even stranger that they not only dove in but also threw the tombstone uh, on top of it. No, it's definitely a little bit weird, but hey, you do what you gotta do. I think they go for that dive because previously Luki Luki was just keeping the lane completely static, so there was a little bit of a creep surplus, so just trying to flood Dogchamp as hard as they realistically could, but you end up getting the tombstone, Luki Luki gets, I want to say, three waves to himself underneath his tower, and you don't really get anything in trade, so it's a little bit ugly, or at least it feels so, and Yarn as well, he's been on point with the pulls, but has also made time to stack his triangle, as we see Shadow Doomans very consistently do, just because you get that free double stack, and it feels like right now, at the very least, Dog Jumper getting off to a pretty good start here. Two kills on the board, solid farming across all their cores, Ray Lalisa, meanwhile, uh, more than solid. Look at him, 34 and 3, far and away the leader in terms of that last hit count, but does have to take a trip back to the fountain. The good news about that, though, is Yarn comes in and 
You can sap a little bit of XP over to your Shadow Demon to try and maybe grab him half a level. Not much more than that, but compared to the, what you're getting on the supports on the King of Kings side, who aren't really doing a whole lot right now either, Arnie's going to have that advantage. No, definitely. It just feels like right now Dunk Chip are doing a really good job of not having any wasted space. Everything is just uh, feeling very easy for them to do, as well as taking what they rightfully deserve, because right now, King of Kings, there's no cross-map rotation. You don't even have level 6 on mini just yet, as he is still playing a little bit behind that Storm Spirit, and we probably won't see the mid laners rotate out of their farming rotations until maybe a power rune changes things up, but Aside from that, everybody is more or less in gridlock here. Everybody needs to stay either in the side lanes or the jungle. Otherwise, you could see maybe the Spirit Breaker start to snowball a bit, but I know Dogchimp don't want that to happen. They want Stonebank to have this laning stage go on as long as humanly possible. Yeah, just looking for as much farm as possible. And your dog champ, you know, talking about how well they've been playing, the, the phrase highly efficient had not been applied to them all that frequently in this group stage but are starting to really look much more stable and much more confident as well part of that as you mentioned et is probably because of the fact that that gridlock is sort of coming into play no one is able to make any sort of cross lane maneuver but now Sram, the duel is there they're gonna go in for it that avalanche though is really breaking this up they'll still get the win moment of courage proc doing some work there as luki will also turn around for the tombstone and now yeah tp's away mini I understand what you wanted to do there, but that's now a TP to the lane that gets you absolutely nothing. Yep, and that's why he immediately starts walking back. And, well, the other unfortunate part about all this is that in Mini going for the Shadow Strike build to lane versus the Storm Spirit, well, you're not doing a lot of whole laning versus the Storm Spirit anymore. And it's a little bit unfortunate because if he had more points up in the Scream of Pain, maybe he gets that farm, that stack. Maybe he gets to look for a few more items. I think in that respect, Ray has wholeheartedly taken the advantage here and it finds the fairy's trinket as well. So really everything is just coming up Ray right now. He is off to a fantastic start. Exactly what you wanted when they picked, picked up this hero for him in the first place. So that becomes even more potentially important considering both teams have gone, hold on, gone out, charging in, looking for stone bank here. They've got Serem coming over as well. And I don't think Dogchamp realized that yet, as Nether, Nether did not really do a whole lot. That is not a good look. Dunhow now has to try and get away. They're going to use the Nightmare to make sure that the Rubik can't come in for any sort of telekinesis shenanigans. And they clean up Dunhow. They're going to get a second as well as Ray reveals himself in this lane. And he actually wants to go for a third. Hane did not clear out, not showing enough respect to the Storm. But really, Lisa doesn't quite have the mana to keep on chasing. Yeah, and that's where if Ray is going to decide to play his Storm Spirit this way, if he's going to use his man to get kills, then he better hit or he should just farm instead. But uh, there's no way Mini does this. This is actually just uh, another unfortunate rotation. And well, Ray has to walk back to base. He's probably going to try and just farm his jungle in reverse till he gets back towards that well. But at the same time, if Ray's rotations continue to work out, hey, Everything is still looking pretty bright for the Storm. Not going for the Orchid Rush and... Ooh, big dive mid, actually. They're looking for the Shadow Demon, trying to bring him down. Yarn should be finished off there. He, he had the disruption, but I think that would have just delayed the death rather than prevent it. But that is the first kill of the game for King of Kings and at a time when they really did need it. Because Mini, as you said, first rotation top doesn't hit. Second rotation bot still doesn't hit. Needed something. Does get the kill. So there is uh, some sort of salve for the Queen of Pain, but... That was the point that I was uh, looking to make before that fight broke out. But both heroes on both sides are in that exact realm of you need to make plays, but they need to connect, right? Storm going to be able to take down Hane, but the, the, the spirits, the invokers, heroes of that nature, Queen of Pain, you need to be mobile and active if, and you need to be winning. Otherwise, things like this will happen. Mini is playing from behind compared to the Storm. Well, definitely so. And... There is a set rhythm that you can start to get into versus the Storm Spirit. If you can call when he does and doesn't have mana, it's where your dives could possibly work out, where before you get immediately punished. And it's that rhythm that King of Kings really need to find, and then maybe raise rotations to look a little bit less effective. But 
the biggest issue is just whenever Ray gets to do exactly this, reactively TP to a lane, go for a kill, and then farm the jungle until his TP is back up. That's what he wants to do every day of the week and what he's probably going to try to continuously do just to make sure he's the most farmed, most active he could possibly be. And hey, this is another kill leading out of his TP. They really got to chill a little bit on King of Kings. And try for the kill, though. Okay, that's nice. Telekinesis sets up perfectly for the Sonic Wave, and they will bring down the big bad Ray Lalisa. And, well, you did say they needed to chill, but if an opportunity like that sort of walks right into uh, your line of fire, you might as well go for it. Undying for Storm is a fantastic trade, but they get the trade off that time. The last two or three times in a row, it hadn't gone well. So, still very much correct. They, they do need to be a little bit more selective with their opportunities, but a place like that one certainly going to help them try to get back into this. No, definitely, and... That's also where Ray going for the Kaya. Once he has it, the scope of his plays are just going to increase drastically. But at the same time, I feel like he got really caught off guard by the Nether Strike. Didn't know where the SP was playing. And that's something they can't fall prey to. They have a lot of defensive vision plays right now from Buddy Nine, just defending their jungle. But that means that they don't have perhaps the furthest reach. They really need to wait for King of Kings to come over to their side before they go for the too crazy play and build oh, for man. a grip here. They got the grip. Really there well is. played. Kind of the opposite way you normally see that go. Normally it's the Fiend's grip into the storm jump, but Ray Lalisa realizes if we wait that long, the smoke can break and then the blink away might save your Queen of Pain. So makes the jump, gets the kill. They've got a Nightmare onto Serem. Eh, might just want the damage on the tower more than anything, but they're gonna give it a go. Jumping in onto the Undying. This is gonna get a little bit dicey, though. Oh, and no. Yeah, that was not the right call to make. Disruption, however. Oh. That saved the day, but uh oh. He needs to make sure they're not lined up. Done. <laughs> oh, man. Could have still gotten the kill. He may still get a kill, as they are gonna try and focus down Yarn here, but this is just gonna be the support at this point. And here comes Luki. He wants a duel, but who does he want it on? That is a purge that was actually stolen away. Luki, he is going to die, but at least he got the dual win before he went down and actually did not pay attention to when Hane had taken that purge. It's a nice little maneuver there, but Hane is now going to pay for it. Stonebank pushing in. Sonic Wave, though, deployed. Oh, Stonebank no. gets hit by the telekinesis. That is twice now that they've cut their opponents out with that combo. Got the storm first, got Stonebank the second time, and well, all of a sudden, that makes that look so much better for King of Kings. And really, it's just simply a Rubik lift. It's a Rubik lift into the buffed stun duration from the Avalanche. And man, oh man, Stonebank, after having such a clean early game, he thought he could help. He thought he had a free kill on the Rubik, but the knockback from the Sonic Wave was just so obnoxious. And it was very obvious which was the real PL after that. So he just gets turned on. And well, you lost two cores in pretty dramatic fashion there. They're very fortunate that Ray was able to still just zip away. He was able to reset, wasn't able to rejoin the fight, unfortunately, but he still was able to survive after the original disruption from Yarin. But man, they've got to be cautious. King of Kings are definitely looking for these engagements. And now Mini, he has his Orchid. So you overstep just a little bit and then suddenly your snowballing heroes could just finding themselves losing. And well, Ray's going to do this though. Yep. Has the regen room. Jumping into that top lane. Dunhow is not going to be able to survive that one as... Yeah. Ray Lalisa will take him down. So your Storm Spirit getting back into the swing of things here after narrowly avoiding the death mid. And that has the 10th kill on the board for the Dog Champ side now. So they really are still trying to keep that pressure on. But like you said, you got to keep an eye out now for the Queen of Pain. As many is the hero that they're going to be looking to right now. Right? The Tiny's not ready. And your Spirit Breaker has been less than successful with his own initiation. So the pressure is now on that Queen of Pain. And where is it? There we go. Courier is a little bit slow to deliver that. But the Claymore is coming out. And we'll see just how aggressively Mini now wants to play. Nah, uh, it's a little bit of a slugfest right now. And I think that's where... And then, here we go. He jumps in. Fiend Scripts there and follow wow. it up a second time. That is so quick. Mini taken down. Serem is chased a little bit under his tower, but once they see the tombstone, yeah, that's that's not really a good play to make, even with the Queen of Pain dead. So they're going to back this off, maybe take it a little bit more slowly, wait out the tombstone if possible, or actually, yeah, Stonebank wants to go in and get the gold for it. Yeah, and we'll it is going to so. be free. 
And that's where uh, I think Serum had a very slim opportunity to react, but he is also max level Tombstone. We're not seeing the max for that grip, and well, okay, B9 is a little bit out of his depth, but okay, duel from Wookie Wookie. He's Damage. Gonna zip in. They're not going to get the win, but Benny should go oh, down. No, he no, won't, Mini! Well, it's still not enough to save Benny, but at least they'll they'll kind of trade this out, but they need more. Dunha's going to try to charge forward, but this is getting a little bit awkward. This fight is really starting to peter out, but Stonebank doesn't want to let them go. He's going to be able to track down one kill onto Dunha. Now Mini doesn't have any backup. He has to blink away, and it was a nice sonic wave. You sort of take down two as both the LC and the Storm die, but... It's not enough to fully turn the fight. Dog Champ there still take down everyone. Yeah, and very thankful that Stonebank is able to be the cleanup crew because, man, this avalanche is not getting respected. That's the second time they dive in, they look good, they immediately get turned on, and then they get killed by the Tiny and the Sonic Wave. And sure, things do even out. Kill's the big winner of that fight, but it's when the trades are as messy as they are like right now that you're giving a lot of levels and a lot of xp over to king of kings that before they were still playing at quite the heavy deficit it's just throwing away your lead a little bit even though the trades still look fine gold wise and well there's b9 gone yeah, i'm gonna get caught out and oh hane he stole the fiend script that is pretty big that's that might just be bigger than the actual kill on the bloody nine because now it gives them more lockdown to go after far more valuable targets if that Storm Spirit tries to zip in and doesn't account for Honey's position. They probably don't know either. That's such a low percentage play. I, I don't even know how he didn't use his spell up until that point, but this could truly catch them off guard. And I says, okay, guys, I, ha I have it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's find somebody, anybody. I have Fiend's Grip. Gotta make a move, but... They're not really in a position right now to be grouped up. Might require some TPs if they really want anything, but no immediate target presenting itself. Yarn is hanging out up top. That's not really the hero that you want. Stone Bank would be nice, but it looks like the jump's going to be well, made instead onto the Queen of Pain. The original Fiend's Grip uh, proving to be a little bit more valuable. Mini, I mean, he doesn't have anything defensive. That Fiend's Grip's really been what caused his death three of those four times. Um... That is an interesting pause. It's not going to change this play. Serem is still absolutely dead, but... Not sure what the reason is. Benny's apologizing for it, but... Alt-tab. Okay, that's, that's... That's one that you don't see too often in terms of the reasoning, but... Game will be resumed. Serem is still dead. And... Benny, he now TP's top. They're going to look for Luki Luki, and... He's... Wow, he was kind of stuck in the air there between the toss and the nether strike, but... They're at least able to make that into a trade-off as they take down the core and they stop the push on their tier 2. Yeah, and it really is unfortunate because Benny starts his TP and then the pause comes through. So I think Luki, Luki might be a little bit miffed on that just because he is getting killed top at the same time while Ray is killing the Undying Bottom. But hey, you know, still got the trade in the quad before all of that broke out. And I think Minnie's probably getting a little bit sick of getting gripped here. I think... Uh, Hanez is still looking for and actually might have his Aether Lens right now, which is going to mean he could just cancel that grip a little bit easier. But until this point, I think that we really do need to see maybe some more defensive play coming out from either Mini or his teammates just having someone right there to cancel it. And smoke underneath the ward. This is going to be a little bit risky from King of Kings, but even Benny not going for a Blink Dagger. So they really are all in on the SB and Rubik being able to run that interference. And... Well, they're all going to pop here, even though Benny has the Shadow Blade. I believe they both teams actually know what's up here. They have the Sentry placed from the Fog, and I guess the call is just going to be to farm. They think it's a little bit too crazy to go into the Triangle now. Yeah, once you've lost the element of surprise at this point, on both sides, not really a whole lot that you're going to gain by sticking around. So, both teams back off. Do you want to point out for Benny, uh, you mentioned not really going for the Blink. The Shadow Blade was the call for him, but he does have the Shard as well, so... He is still going to be able to have that increased farming rate, but on the other side of things, Stone Bank, uh, that feels like a, yeah, that is an earlier heart than usual. Went straight after it, or straight onto it after the Diffusal Blade, so Stone Bank may be having some questions about his durability, but over on the other side, Rain Lisa teaming up with Luki. Zip in, get the Vortex down, easy dual win for the LC, and 
Well, here's where you come to an issue on the dog champ side. Now would be a fantastic time to start maybe kicking the tires on Roshan, but your lineup isn't really fantastic at taking it. Yeah, it's where Stonebank is going to need to wait for quite a long time before he's actually able to provide very much damage, but okay. Wookie, he's really deep and the tomb is going. Ray is going to try and zip in to help. There's going to be the disruption, so they are putting a lot of time, but now the Sonic Wave coming through, pushing everybody back. Blade 9 will fall. Ray Lisa taken down as well. Mini, a much needed play there. They're going to be able to keep the tombstone up, but uh, Stonebank's kind of still in the middle of this. Pushing his way forward, trying to get onto Mini, burning through a lot of that mana, so Mini needs some help. Dunhow charging his way in, though, both getting onto Yarn and knocking back Stonebank, but there's the duel. Luki's going to lock the Spirit Breaker down. They need help. Serem is going to be able to provide it, but on the other side of the river, the PL almost uh, not accepting that he doesn't have backup. Still trying to push this fight. They throw the tree at him. Not sure if that's enough just yet as he continues to run. But Mini and Hane are eventually going to be able to track him down. Serem did have to sacrifice himself on the opposing side to make sure that Luki and Yarin didn't rejoin the fight, but that is a very acceptable trade. Undying goes down, you get three, and it's kind of hard to believe. That all started basically underneath where the Tier 1 Tower used to be with just Luki running into that Undying. Yeah, he misses his first opportunity to find maybe a dual win, but I think choosing the fight underneath the tombstone is not only a very difficult decision to make, but one that I think you seldom should, and I think that's where the fight really starts to go wrong for them. Again, there was the Orchid follow-up, the reaction from Benny, just the Avalanche is just doing actually way too much when it comes to stopping these heroes with your very, very low cast points. And it's killed the Storm pretty much every single time, even though he still has a phenomenal KDA. I think Ray really needs to be careful here, maybe itemize for the BKB, and that's exactly what he's going to choose to do. But at the same time, Stonebank doesn't have damage just yet. He is still just whittling away at these heroes. He has only Diffy Heart, and I know Heart is a massive item for the hero, but until he has the items in between, that's why you don't really see PLs go Diffy Heart very much anymore, because well, not only does Diffu give you straight up less Agi, your hero just doesn't do much right now. And I think that's why he gets cleaned up so easily. But D9. yeah, ooh. Just deleted there, Benny, with the damage. Just able to bring him down. But don't think King of Kings can go any further than that in this bottom lane, which is unfortunate because they did bring quite a few heroes over. But they find a kill. And I think the important part of that before that play goes down is that Dunhow was able to pop the Shadow Blade and then charge out. Uh, from an attempted gank so those are the kind of swings that become that little bit more important you keep your hero up you take someone down even someone like the bane who is not massively valuable in and of itself but it staggers your opponents that little bit more where now dog champ have to wait and while they wait the kings are trying to chip away at the tier one mid another pause <laughs> Lag, 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 but okay. you are completely right. They're already trying to get up a push on this middle tower. Lots of DCs, hmm. actually, but um, Dang. Luki is in the position here to try and catch Mini off guard. Uh, I wonder if we're going to see Mini turn around for a Lincoln Sphere anytime soon in this game, because there really are quite a few threats that that could uh, just absolutely take out of the game. Uh, at the same time, there isn't your picture-perfect Lotus Orb builder on King of Kings, even though it's incredibly important this game, just for reflecting all the spells that are going to be thrown onto what really feels like just the tiny, unless they're trying to burst mini, and I think that could be uh, something that maybe Benny's going to be a little bit more, more concerned about as the game progresses here, but they do have to respond very appropriately towards this mid-tower push. As soon as Benny gets on it, it's going to die really fast, and if they don't, well... That's their mid-tier one for pretty much nothing, but I can only imagine Luki, he's going to look for the more fragile heroes, and actually, Mini immediately blinks out after the pause comes undone, so maybe suspecting something going on there from Dog Champ. Doesn't want to get caught out, and that can always happen. Obviously, we're not talking tactical pauses here. There were still some DCs on the Dog Champ side, but regardless of the reasoning why, a pause is always sort of a reset, so... If you're mini, you better play it safe. He doesn't play it safe there, though. He gets caught out. That scan is massive. I, they didn't They didn't know. They didn't have vision in the area. They just know someone's there off the scan. They're willing to go in all in. Or excuse me, go all in onto it. And it's probably, well, maybe not the most valuable kill. Benny is probably going to be worth a little bit more. But now that mini's off the map, 
That's going to be Roche. I mentioned this lineup isn't great at taking it. That does still stand, but when they've got this much time, that might not matter. But look at King of Kings. They're going to try to punish this. What exactly can they do? You need to realize... That's oh, Ray. There's going to be the jump in. Ray Lee's pops a BKB, pushes forward. Hane, he stole Static Remnant. That's neat, but not going to be helpful. It's done how. That's a very aggressive charge in. Nether Strike just to try and relocate himself, but it's not going to matter. Ray Lelisa tracks him down, gets the kill. King of Kings, they got to really rethink their strategy on this one. They do get the breakdown onto Stonebank, though, and Stonebank, he's gone. That's... No, that's just too aggressive. He's so far forward. His teammates, I think, oh, no. anticipated him backing off. Ray Lelisa now will make the same mistake. And Luki, okay, it's a dual win. Nice, but he's going to be able to kill Benny off here, but there's going to be that break coming in again. Luki gets taken down, and what are the cores on Dog Champ? really thinking here they're just all going in one by one throwing any sense of team fight cohesion out the window et and they, they they just they threw that away it's a team fight loss they got roche down to half hp so king of king can now push in to try and take it down and i i i, I can't really come up with a plausible plausible explanation there no and of course they didn't want to get dragged out of the pit, but I think Stonebank can just be a shred more patient, let them get closer, drag them towards the area that you actually want to fight in. Instead, it felt like a fairly heavy overextension, and I mean, for taking Roche, the tombstone was placed on the radiant high ground there, so they really didn't have any business kind of kiting them into the tombstone in that fight, and then, well, unfortunately, it took so long, many respawns, and he gets to Orchid, the storm after his BKB usage. It just felt like, I don't know, it, it looked crazy from King of Kings for a second there, especially with how early Dune Ha went in, but I uh, guess he tanked enough of Dogchamp's spells that Benny was just able to run wild after the fact, but really, Stonebank's the biggest question mark in my mind. The way he went down, I couldn't tell if he knew which one was the illusion, to be honest. I just... Some very questionable calls on that dog champ side they drop what was looking at a what five or six k lead and now not only have you lost that network lead but if you're now looking to get it back you've got to fight into an aegis on a tiny who is starting to really pick up we talked about the fact that he went for sort of the shadow blade into silver edge instead of something along the lines of a blink dagger but now the right click is coming into play the ac is just about done so I don't know, you just don't want to fight into Benny right now, and that's not even taking into account the fact that Mini, with that Kaya and Sanj now finished off, is going to be a little bit harder to lock down as well. Uh, everything is coming up pretty nice for, for uh, King of Kings, and with the way that they're pushing in now, this AC just means that Benny does not care at all, and you're going to have to respect him. They're trying to get a push of their own starting on the top lane, and it happens at around the same time, not to mention the top throw is whittled, so it does end up being quite the efficient trade but it's the tier three is the difference maker here and oh ray's gotta be so careful he does not want to get lifted oh Hannes was so close but he just gets to walk away oh luffy's gonna drop the duel down there's the sonic wave though then he he wins the duel he will lose his first life but it's his first life that's the operative word whereas dog champ just getting run off of their own racks bloody nine taken down tier three still falling stone banks here but what play is there to make right now I don't really know if they can get initiation that they want, especially with that. The Avalanche clips Ray. He's going to pop the BKB now, trying to fight his way through this as Mini is dropping low, but he's able to blink himself out of there. Ray wants to keep chasing, though, but he's got to be careful. That BKB is wearing off, and who cares? The BKB wasn't even relevant. He just dies to physical damage beforehand, and they got Dunhow out of that. That's not the trade that they were looking for in the slightest. They at least saved the racks. I guess that's got to count for something, but... Three heroes dead, tier three gone, buyback expended on your Legion commander, and you got a Spirit Breaker. That's it. Yeah, not ideal in the least. And uh, they even swap over. They scout out the DD on Benny, and oh, oh, they didn't know about the PL there. If they did, maybe they looked for a jump, but just way too clean. And well, there's your uh, bottom rack still surviving at the very least. But uh, King of Kings, I certain are still feeling good about their position here and we're waiting for really quite the heavy growth now coming in from dog champ i think once stone bank has this ag shard the high ground push gets way more obnoxious you get that tiny on that timer i was talking about before where suddenly he can't afford to just afk hit the building he has to actually think about what he wants to do but at the same time, King of King, they want to find the smoke play while the glyph is down. They know that if they find any pickoff, any hero really without buyback, 
it's just going to mean immediate structural da damage. And that's why Benny, I think, could very well just see him hit into the tier two. And it's not going to last oh. very long. Timing is so unfortunate for Dogchamp. Luki tries to jump in looking for the duel under Dunhow just as he started the charge. So, well, he blinked in but immediately gets knocked back. And now, oh, your Spirit Breaker We're regrouped bottom. and they are going to look gotta for go. something. Benny getting himself broken, getting himself fiends gripped. Hane's going to zip in, but he didn't zip on to Bloody Nine. So Benny's actually going to fall on King of Kings. Yeah, it's time to run. They cannot afford to be here any longer. That is massive from Dogchamp. That is the one play they desperately needed, and they get it. And this is where whacking a Dispel versus the Soul Catcher is brutal because your Tiny gets set to half HP or 35% HP just instantly gone. Not to mention, there were just sentries already placed by Dogchamp. So when you're trying to slink up to the tower with your Silver Edge, you're not really doing a whole bunch of slinking. And... That's also where Hannes was just a little bit too far away to, again, find the disconnect on the grip. So, huge kill to give up. And Dogchamp are honestly feeling like they're back a little bit now. Something you gotta be really scared of, and I think Ray might be getting a solo kill top lane. Yeah, this gets a little bit awkward with the pause coming in, but... I think this should still happen. The silence is down onto your Spirit Breaker, so he's not charging away. The question is... Does Ray Lisa have detection? Yes, he does. He's sitting on the dust, so that Shadow Blade escape isn't really going to be there either. Yeah, honestly, it's a, it's a little bit of a hard kill, but Luki Luki might decide to show up just in case. I think best thing for Dunha is if he just runs up into the trees or even just to the left out of the lane, but you never know. We'll have to see if he does actually make it out here because... Yeah, King of Kings, they gotta kind of stop the dog champ ball right now because it's certainly starting to roll. Well, we've got Yarn back in. He was the player DC'd, so see if dog champ are ready to go. And, well, actually a little bit strange. I, I was pretty sure that this was being played on US East, so it might just be some issues uh, outside of just server status because dog champ have been having a couple of disconnects in this game, but we are going to get back well, into it. Dunhow tried. He certainly tried, but not going to be able to get himself away. And over in the middle lane, or excuse me, not the middle lane, down by the river, there is a bit of a play onto Bloody Nine. Sonic Wave does hit, so they will find that kill. But now the duel locking the Queen of Pain down. Where's the rest of Dogchamp? There it is. Ray Lisa zips in, and Mini goes down. Luki gets the win, plus 110 on that duel damage. So he is starting to hit pretty damn hard. And if you're King of Kings, this is really going to... Put them in a bad way. I mean, your Tiny's coming up in 15 seconds, but once he respawns, the Queen of Pain's still dead unless you're willing to commit a buyback. Yeah, and I don't think that Darkchamp can really test the waters of high ground. That's a little bit out of their depth right now. They'd much rather just take the area around the pit and play a little bit slower, but it's still, we need some crucial items from King of Kings right now. We need the Lincoln Sphere on the Queen of Pain. We need either a BKB or a Satanic on Benny. Some four staffs, some lotuses. I'm really surprised none of the supports on King of Kings have picked up four staffs, uh, just because it feels like right now, once they're in, they're just absolutely stuck. They're not able to actually save a lot of these heroes, and forcing the Storm Spirit to chase after targets is one of the few things that you can do to just kind of slow him down, because it feels like right now, every ounce of mana that Ray Lisa has is hitting, it's dealing damage, it's being effective. And with the way that he's currently built up, he is still just doing so much for his team. And, well, there are some flaws still. Wookie Wookie is still looking for that AC, meaning he doesn't have a BKB. still very vulnerable to the silence. And here we get the smoke up. They'd love to find the LC first, but they'll take both supports instead. But they do need to hit here. This is a, a little bit of a mistimed smoke. This is just for control over their jungle. There's no hit Roche. Ray, though. Oh, Talk no. This is there. Avalanche into the toss, into, I was going to say the charge, but they actually get the kill beforehand. Benny's going to be able to make it happen. I think he had to, yeah, he did have to throw the tree, but they needed the extra damage and they get it. Ray Lisa taken down and King of Kings, maybe a little bit of breathing room here. Roche is about 45 seconds out as well, so that's going to start becoming... Uh, an issue, although I say 45 seconds, that would be the fastest possible respawn, so far from guaranteed, but maybe King of Kings would be fortunate they could get it started while the storm still has a little bit of time left on that respawn. Yeah, and really, I'm just kind of scratching my head 
as to why either Ray stuck around that long or as to why uh, maybe the LC just needs to be a little bit more connected because it feels like now Dog Champ are scared again. They're forced to run away from their opponents. They've already uh, kind of appeared on the fringes of the map giving up all this control that they've worked so hard for the past, I want to say, five minutes to still have over this area. And they do have this very nice deep ward on the outpost still scouting out, but uh, it's going to be a question of how they handle this next Roche fight because a few misplays and we could suddenly see the game shift instantly. A uh, huge item to be picked up, though. Stonebank is looking towards that Scotty. If he can get the Scotty before the Roche is up, and it will be... Yeah, a relatively short Roche timer, but with this, now you have a really easy way to kill the Tiny. You have a very hard time approaching once the Tiny does reveal himself. It's gonna, going to put even more emphasis on who gets the initial jump here. Benny's got a Satanic though, so Soulcatcher, you're not going to burst him for free anymore. Going to be able to just heal himself back up pretty massively, especially since he still has that double hit from the Echo Saber, so see what that added durability does as the push is going to come in they get the duel onto dunhow that is a pretty damn quick kill and king of kings they were not in a position to really contest it benny is all the way down bot he has a tp so could get himself back onto that outpost and he may need to because roche oh they were like two seconds off if bloody nine is in there for just that little bit longer they'll see the respawn so now they don't know somebody should go back over to check but that is going to buy a lot of time and valuable time for the Spirit Breaker to respawn. Yeah, and... There it is. Okay, there you go. Ray does check. It is, again, the second fastest timer. You know, it's only a minute on top of the, the fastest, but at the same time, they want this, they need this. This isn't the Scotty finish from Stone Bank, but I believe they're just a little bit too fast and too set up here. And without the SB, there's a shred of hesitance from King of Kings. They will smoke up and they're actually going to make contact at, I think, a little bit slower time than they were on the initial Roche he's attempt. He's going to drop well, the ult pretty soon here if they want to actually do this. Uh, he's oh going to no. hold off on it. Ray is going to jump in onto the Tiny, but that's not the hero to go on. Benny He's not going to be taken down easily. There's the Sonic Wave, but... They have already lost one. So Rem got taken down. Good news is that the Spirit Breaker has respawned and is charging into the fight. Bad news, he is charging onto Ray Lalisa. He is so far away from his teammates right now. Not sure if he's going to be able to get the kill himself. He gets silenced before he can even try for it with the Nether Strike, but Mini making his way over. They've got a silence of their own onto that storm. They will bring him down. The problem is they abandoned Benny. They'll lose the Tiny. He does not have money for buyback. Roshan dangerously low on HP here, and Dogchamp still have control. And at any moment, there's a buyback available on the storm. They could rejoin this, but... Not even sure if they're going to need it. Oh my god, look at this play. Mini, can he actually do it? He's trying to sneak it. They use Dunhow as a sacrifice, and he did get it, but he's immediately going to lose it, ET. There there goes your Aegis, but keeps it out of the hands of Dog Champ. That's got to count for something. Now he's even going to try to blink himself away, but they should be able to track him down. Luki, four seconds for the duel, but Mini just continues to blink away. Hana even comes in with the Telekinesis to try and help out, so I do believe King of Kings are going to be able to get a couple heroes out of there, and... The fight goes poorly, there's really no denying that, but at least that Aegis stays out of Dog Champ's hands. Yeah, and well, for a fight where nobody was feeling down to commit all too many buybacks, honestly, you can't really ask for better. It is unfortunate that Stonebank doesn't have the Aegis, but just finished his Scotty, he is really tanky. I think the Aegis would have maybe given them a shot at the high ground, but it's more important uh, to keep it out of the hands of the Tiny than it is really for the PL to have it himself. Even giving it over to the Storm would be a bigger advantage, I think. But denying it from the Tiny just means you get to be safe on your high ground. You get to bind your time. And really, looking over at Yarn, Yarn is doing so much with his SC. Not only is he just kind of throwing out all of these demonic purges in these fights, making it impossible for the SP to play, but he also has, I believe, that new Ag Shard, the Demonic Cleanse which just heals, or is that actually just... There's two separate bars now, right? Uh, at the end of the duration units, the unit is healed, yeah, so... They've got, they've got the heal, they've got the kill onto Hane as well, so... What does that heal for? 700, okay. Um, <laughs> I, I had not paid attention to the numbers on that. That is massive, and yeah, as you said... Uh, those don't share charges, the Purge and the Cleanse, so. That's, Jesus, that is huge, Shadow Demon. 
see why now even more teams were banning it away. Because he's going to be able to just basically bail out a teammate if that cleanse can sort of go its full duration. Yeah, it just means that any disable that you try to land here, not to mention it's already just a fantastic Shadow Demon game, but he really has just been doing everything, and I think King of Kings might need to shift their positioning and actually find him first, because there are just way too many disruptions, way too many stones getting thrown, and it really is the only way that Benny can die, as opposed to just getting ripped apart once Stone Bank has him down another 1500 mana, but Stonebank really isn't doing the most damage on his team still. It's still coming in from the Storm and the SD, and man, it's starting to look really good for them. I, they're starting to get this game, uh, I don't want to say under wraps, but King of Kings are struggling to find an easy answer here. And again, no four Staffs, no Lotus Orbs. They're still looking for a lot of these items to just kind of make the fights easier. Benny's looking for a Daedalus at the very least, so, you know, that burst damage is continuing to accelerate and get better, but uh, this smoke could be brutal if they find Benny again in... Oh! It's the zip and they just absolutely get onto him. Can they kill him off in time, though? Benny trying to stand his ground, but he can't do it. Stonebank picks up both kills. Benny dead, Serem dead, Luki got the dual win, plus 140. King of Kings, well, maybe a pick onto Bloody Nine here, but that's, even that's not easy, and here comes Ray zipping in. Looking to lock some heroes down. Dunhow has to charge to try and play this one defensively, but it's just not really going to work. Mini still dies. Hane goes down as well. Stonebank grabs the triple. And now, well, yeah, the BK, or excuse me, not the BKBs, the buybacks have to come out. Mini using his. Sram will pop one as well. The problem is, all the buybacks that they have available do not include the Tiny, who they would need damage-wise to actually mount a defense. So these buybacks are neat, but Dogchamp, they're not going to get tricked. They know. If you don't have Tiny, we don't care. They're going to continue to just push in. They did cut the creep wave, and I believe they nuked it down with that sonic wave. So Bactar will kick in. It will disallow them from going for the secondary racks here. But hey, that's enough. They're just going to back out probably after the range. Eh, okay. Bactar Pat kind of uh, kicks in just in time. But still, that is just a huge advantage. Not to mention, with the way that LC goes now, it's less so about the Ag shard and more about just getting these timings in. They're looking for Oop. Uh, oh no! Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> what a pattern well, there as his target TP'd. So now he, he's not free and clear just yet. Now he is. Another charge comes in. Just gonna sprint to the other side of the map. So a brief moment there maybe where, uh, where Dunhow's heart rate picked up a little bit. I know mine sure as hell did, but he is able to get himself away. That would have been really a terrible kill to give up just because King of Kings would then kind of be forced back into a defensive position. You see right now, they're doing their best to move uh, move across the map and try and get those creep waves pushed out, but if you're down a hero and the Spirit Breaker in particular who's so mobile, then maybe they wouldn't feel as confident doing this. No, definitely not. And honestly, they are having to play now for the split push. They need, again, that next set of items before this fight could really happen for them. It's a little bit fortunate that the Roche is off the table just because, well, hey, now we know that the fight isn't going to be unstoppable. They are going to be able to at least push out some of these waves, but it's just very obnoxious to deal with. And the problem, whenever there are mega creeps or super creeps uh, kind of on board, those items that need to be coming through from your supports, it's been so long since King of Kings have gotten a successful team fight, and it's just slowed down the growth of Serem and Hanna so much for the other this side. Rap, no. This would be good. They need to find Ray. I'm gonna try and jump on to the Santa Cap does come into play, but is it gonna be enough? Yes, it is. They get the duel down onto many of all people, locking in that Queen of Pain. And Queen of Pain is now dead. Spirit Breaker, he tried to get in there for the Nether Strike, but I'm not sure this is really gonna be enough to matter. He is silenced up, slowed down, finished off. They get onto Bloody Knot in the back line, but that's just not gonna be enough. Hane. I think he, yeah, he stole Duel and used it on Luki Luki, but that's a duel from a Rubik that you straight up don't win. So he gets taken down, Benny and Serem dead as well, and, well, they had to kill Ray. That, that, that's the long and the short of it, right? Without the kill onto the Storm Spirit, that whole thing just breaks apart. Yeah. 
but unfortunately that's where the ZX cap hey yo you know your push is immediately ruined it's not an aeon disc but it's enough and it allows luki luki to immediately save yarin instead with the press the attack he has the aoe press the attack so unless he gets silenced himself he saves both the supports they immediately turn on the queen of pain it's SD Hero. There's a reason why we haven't seen anybody play it yet, because this is just absolutely ridiculous. And here we go again. They're going to give it a try, but Luki Luki's too tanky. Stonebank now presses in to get the duel onto Dunhouse, so they'll take him out, and that's, that's going to be good. your GG. As King of Kings, they can't mount the comeback. They just... They can't get the right targets. They give a Phantom Pincer way too much time, and... Dog Champ, okay? This is really the, the first time, I think, in this event where we have seen them play a very coherent, well-executed, efficient game, and they walk away with the win. Yeah, and of course, we still had questions that needed to be answered, especially from Ray. Got a soul kill in mid, continued to put pressure across the map, was just really showing why this hero is actually banned from him, why teams like EG and Quincy don't let him play it, even though... It, they are on completely different fields here, but it just shows how comfortable and how natural he makes the hero look. At the same time, I think both Yarn and Luki Luki honestly did a fantastic job. Yarn especially just held down the fort. It's ridiculous how that hero scales, though. I do not think that Demonic Cleanse should have three charges in addition to his ulti also getting three charges, but once you get Scepter, and it wasn't even a question of the game because King of Kings had to kind of peel off in the mid game, Yarn just had so much farm on this SD and never the target. It was always B9. It was always Luki Luki. It uh, leaves, leaves the game with one death here, but without King of Kings finding their way onto that SD, your cores just cannot survive if you're constantly getting purged up, especially strength cores like Spirit Breaker and Tiny. They were just unable to survive. And I think that was really the shift in the game where Benny, he tried to go for that push onto the bottom racks. He tried to finish it knowing they didn't have Glyph. King of Kings missed that, well, I want to say five minute window and Dog Champ just gained so much strength in that little amount of time. And then, unfortunately, the Roche fight just going so well for them is really what kind of spelled disaster for King of Kings. And then they're so far behind with their supports. They're so far behind with their items. Mini was able to at least get the Lincoln Sphere, but they just didn't have really enough time to itemize to stop what Dog Champ were building up. Yeah, you can see from the graph, King of Kings, they were holding on to a lead. Really just kind of let things slip through their fingers there as Arin... <laughs> As you said, I, I really you got to give it to him as the MVP, which does sound a little bit weird in a game where Ray popped off on a signature hero. But without Yarin there to make those plays, I think Ray Lalisa loses a lot of those opportunities as we get into the second half. So, uh, yeah, the Shadow Demon bans all make absolute perfect sense now that we get to see that hero in action. And if you're King of Kings, that that may just be sort of the opening move from them. Phase one, don't let that Shadow Demon pop up again. I mean, especially if you're going to pick the SB, right? It just feels right. like it was way too much of a gamble, but we'll have to see. I'm assuming we're going to see very different drafts coming from them, especially. Yeah, so game one goes to Dog Champ, able to get their third win of the group stage. Still not enough to really move up the standings any, but momentum into the playoffs always got to count for something. And speaking of momentum, Dog Champ with a 1-0 now have a chance for potentially the only uh 2-0 sweep that we've really seen them be in a position to pursue so we'll see if they can keep this impressive play going we'll see what changes king of kings make uh to their own lineup for that second game so we're going to be moving into game two in just a little bit we'll step away for about five to ten minutes here get that game two draft started so stick around we'll be right back <laughs> 